doing some head and healing here. <laughs> had, him, had him about ready to go down. Okay, let's go before the Lord and thank you for today. Father God, we thank you so much that you allow us to come together and to uh, fellowship and to enjoy the teaching of your word and the proclamation of the word. We ask your blessing to be upon this service. We ask, Father God, that your spirit just be upon us and that you just give us guidance and wisdom and the things that uh, Jim teaches and that Carol and I say today, that uh, your words will go forth and it'll be the things that your spirit will want us to be uh, brought forth to the word of the congregation here. We thank you, Lord, again for the joyous time that we have, the fellowship we have here is just awesome, and we praise and thank you for that as we pray in Jesus' holy name. Amen. Okay, um, Pastor Jim asked ask us to uh, give a little bit of a testimony on on tithing, and uh, we just. Uh, Look over a few things, and we've got a couple of just really short, quick things we'd like to share with you. I'm sure that uh, most everybody here understands what the word tithing means. It means bringing an offering of a tenth to the Lord. And it's something that He's asked us to do. Not a lot of things does He ask us to do that He gives us a promise on, but this is one of them. And, um, you know, when we look at, look at tithing, we oftentimes look at it as a sacrifice. How do, we, how do we do this sacrifice? I don't have enough money to go around. How am I going to fit something else in? What can I cut out? How, this, is, this is a sacrificial thing. But um, a sacrifice is something that, that takes away from you. Tithing is different than that. It gives to you. And um, if you get more out of something than you put into it, is that a sacrifice or is that an investment? I look at our, the tithe that we give as an investment. The Lord blesses what we do. And uh, Carol's going to share a couple of things with you to maybe give you a little insight into some of the things that we've experienced. Pull it down for <laughs> Jump! Okay. Um, there have been many, many things, but there were two that specifically came to mind that we're tithing and uh, trusting God to work all things together for the good and we knew those scriptures and we were standing on those things those that truth and uh, um, making it week by week financially and uh, our son went over to Strasbourg, uh, Strasbourg France and he was in school there for a semester so we felt that we deemed it necessary to be talking to him and back then, it was on the phone with the cell phones. And uh, I thought, man, this is going to cost us a lot. But I thought, you know, we need to do this. We need to stay in touch with them. And I just really felt, and I think Rich too at the time, felt that God would honor this because we need to keep in touch with our son, especially if he's in another country. And so we talked with him for the whole semester every weekend pretty much and we were kind of dreading the phone bill and it never came it never came and Rich says oh man you know we're trusting God but you got this other side of it you know you know you got to pay your dues so uh, we waited and never got a bill from about it uh, and uh, Rich says oh man well, maybe it's a blessing. <laughs> we said, well, we got it checked with the phone company. He says, I don't want it three months down the road. And then they remember, oh, they didn't, you know, they discover it and then we have to pay up. So um, Rich called the company, no record of whatsoever. <laughs> wow, well, praise <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> tell you that that was just a blessing when you know you're doing something right and you know you need to do it and you know God is God knows that you're doing what is right especially staying in, you know, in touch with your son that I knew that he would honor that and somehow he would work it out you know you just have to do what you have to do well God was there and then the other situation was um, one time Again, you know, uh, Rich was working two jobs before he made a transition to one. And I was uh, teaching kindergarten, preschool, and cleaning houses. 
And uh, hadn't had a, we hadn't had a vacation in a long time. It was a desire of my heart to have a vacation. But I thought, well, God, you know, you work that out. I don't know how to do that. So um, by me tithing my what I made on what I what I made to the Lord, my 10 percent to a ministry that was pouring into me in, in leaps and bounds. And every time you get, I got paid every week. I mean, every day. So I'd cash my checks and I had money, you know. So, and then divvy it up. And, you know, when you've got cash, you know, it just kind of flashes at you like, <coughs> bling, with the women wear, you know. <laughs> and, uh, and so I'd divide it up in envelopes so that my portion would pay a certain amount of bills. But then I thought, you know, we haven't had vacation in a long time. And so I was just praying about it, still tithing. I could take this extra money and put it back in. So anyway, the Lord began giving me extra things and people would bless me with bonuses and this and that. And so I would put it back. And uh, lo and behold, before I knew it, I had $500 in rich. You know, we're talking about vacation. And I don't know that I told you about that. But <laughs> <laughs> she spent it on me. We did talk about this, but that little part I didn't know. <laughs> but anyway... Um, my kids, my, my daughter, I think she was in uh, her last year of high school, and her son had come back from college. And uh, we thought, well, we need to take a trip. We need to do something. The kids are, you know, at this point. And, and uh, I said, well, I got this $500. Where did you get that? You know? and so I, well, God provided it. Let's just put it that way. And so uh, we decided to go to Wyoming. We rented a cabin, and we did some camping also, a combination of a lot of things. And we thought, well, we'll just take it and we'll go as far as we can. By the time we did all the things we wanted to do and came back, we were like within a dollar or cents of $498.99. We only had 500 So God just blessed. He gave us that amount. It was just what we needed. And God gets the glory for that because... You know, you, you can try to figure out all kinds of things in ways that you think you can do it. But you know, God got a great, greater plan. And what He wants to do is get us to understand, to trust Him because He wants to bless us. It's His money anyway. It isn't ours. And, and so, when you give something to Him, boy... You can just trust your father to take care of it for you. And I know it's difficult. Rich and I have been there. And especially when we were tithing and you're balancing all the money out with your brain. You just do what's right and good in the sight of God and he will honor that. And so that's just too many. <laughs> okay. Yeah, like she said, you know, it's, it's easy to look at people. To uh, look at your financials and say, you know, I, I can't afford to do that. But we found out that we can't afford not to. Whenever we've gotten slack in our giving, we've found out that we have expenses that come up that don't come up to us a lot. We've, we've been blessed with awesome health. We've had vehicles that have lasted forever. We've got a, an old refused, re, refused, used refrigerator that you know has lasted us for. I don't even know how many years, and it just keeps on tracking, you know. But the Lord, Lord blesses us with things. It's not always with finances or like giving us money, like for the trip, but through a lot of other things. And uh, I wanted to share with you just one little scripture thing, and then get to Jim here. We're running over our time. But uh, Malachi three ten says, "Bring the whole tithe into the storehouse, so that there may be food in my house, and test me." Listen to that. Test me now in this, says the Lord of hosts. If I will not open for you the windows of heaven and pour out for you a blessing until there is no more need. It's one of the very few times that God asks us to test Him. And there's a reason for that. You know, I was thinking about this last night and the, and the thought came to me. All of us here, or most of us here, have trusted the Lord with our salvation. We, we have a confidence that He is going to provide salvation for us. That He's going to make it possible for us to one day be in heaven with Him. But how can we possibly even consider trusting somebody with something as great as our salvation if we cannot trust Him with our something as small as our finances? It just, I'm going, that doesn't make sense to me. 
you know, you trust them with the greater, but you can't trust them with the lesser. That 